Chapter 43. Constance stood in the pamper overlooking the road. Dawn was breaking behind her and to the east. Now more important than things troubling the badger's mind, the abbot came bustling over with Basil's limping in the rear. Both creatures looked extremely concerned. Have you seen Matthias? the abbot asked. He's been missing from his room since yesterday afternoon. Basil looked shamefaced. It's all my fault, I'm afraid. Should have kept an eye on the little rascal. I'll have to be organized in a search party. Not, no time for that. Look. Down the road in the distance, a long column of dust was rising. The three creatures sniffed the faint breeze. It was unmistakable. Clooney's army was coming to Red Bull. No need to... We'll need every available defender, Constance murmured. We have no need to cause panic, but this looks like a full-scale assault. The fox's warning was coming true. Just Winifred and Formal and Ambrose were sent for. Together they leaned over the pamper, watching the dust cloud draw nearer. The beat of the drum was audible, and the individual rats could be picked out. They're heading right for us. Better get all the defenders on battle sit stations. At a given signal, John Churchmouse began tolling the attack warning upon the Joseph Bell. All throughout the abbey and its grounds, creatures stopped what they were doing. Picking up weapons that lay close to Paul, they assembled at the appointed post, waiting for orders. Clooney weighed his standard above the stun sun-flecked dust rising from the road. Gradually, the horde ground to a halt. Shading his eyes against the sun, he stared up at the walls. Surrender to Clooney the Scourge, he bellowed harshly. Go and boil your head, rat, came Constance's gruff reply. Clooney took a pace backwards, letting his standard dip low. Two score of the sling rats came forward, whirling his stone-loaded weapons. They let fly a volley of the rampage, shouting blood-curling ward cries. The stones clattered harmlessly off the wall and fell back to the road. Clooney cursed inwardly. For all his show of force and arrogance, he made a strategic error. The sun was in its army's eyes. The defenders had the advantage. This soon became clear with a platoon of otters on the ramparts and loose a rattling fusillade of heavily, heavy pebbles. Pandemonium broke out in the vanguard of Clooney's horde. With cries of agony as the pebbles found their marks, one stone actually st struck Clooney's helmet. Back to the ditch in the meadows. Stay out of their range. Clooney did his best to keep his voice even. As the army retreated to safety, he had he was lost to go, willing himself to walk slowly, as as if there were a way he pla he planned it. Four rats lay dead near the wall. Kilconey's drum stood unattended at the road. Basil Stag hair sniffed royally. Not a very well organized initiative sortie for the invincible horde. Our chaps took the wind right out of their sails. What? Her, they ha they do have to wait till sun moves around, commented Formal. But we don't, cried Jess. Bring the archers. Keep the slings going. Let's give the mob in the ditch something to think of. Out of the safety of the woodland, Kilconey attempted to soothe the Clooney's uh, ego. Uh, what a sly old move of yours. Still luring them into false sense of security. Making them think they're winning. That's the game. Unexpectedly, Kilconey received her reward for flattery at the wrong moment. A thwack over her head from the standard. Shut your mouth, ferret, Clooney said sourly. Get me some sort of command post rigged up here. Chief Thief, where, where are the gangs with the battering ram? Coming right up away, Chief, called Chief Thief, as he trotted off to find the ram carriers had got to. It was not long before the tiny harvest mouse archers were bending their bows, sending small pointed shafts darting into the ditch. These, supplemented by stouter arrows from the field mice and the other slingers, caused many wounds and great discomfort for the would-be attackers, pinning a good number of them down. Moral was low because Clooney had ordered no retaliation until after midday. Jess Squirrel wrapped swiftly down to the road on the rope, looping the rope's end about the old water butt that had been the ferret's drum. She sprang inside, calling up the pepper. Haul away, Constance. The barrel flew up under the badger's strong paws. Jess was quite pleased with herself. Her plans for the drum had beat for, for the drum to beat the rats. Basil Sackhair strode the carpet with a swagger stick tucked beneath his arm. He dodged around the squirrel who was rolling the barrel along, retaining the dignity befitting his rank. Basil kept up a constant stream of orders. Fire at will, young mouse types. Otters, pick up your targets. Any moles here, report to Formal down on the grounds right away. The hare cast off his leg bandage. 
Now he was back to active ser service. The honorable war room was co completely forgotten. Meanwhile, back in the meadow, Clooney sat brooding under a makeshift tent. At least the ferret was good for something. Chief Thief hurried up, urging on the content of a battering ram carriers, hoping to find favor that Clooney he would put himself at the head of the party, helping to be what carried the cumbersome object. Come on, mate, he cried. Let's knock the, on the abbey door. Having negotiated the deck, they charged across the road. Once they had passed a certain point, it created a difficult angle for the defenders in the wall to fire at them. The massive ram shuddered as it smashed against the gate ha house door. With Sheathcliff shouting encouragement, the ram carriers took a short run back and battered the door again. Clooney was starting to see go things going right for a change. There was more to Sheathcliff than he had first thought. The doors ran the third time. Now creatures in the wall stood in full view as they retaliated by firing down on the ram carriers. Clooney called up his best slingers and archers, ordering them to pick up the off the defenders. For fortunately, the otters and mice on the ramparts were clearly visible. Clooney's archers caused numerous casualties, forcing the defenders to drop below the parpet. The battering ram continued though it was already made no lasting impression upon the solid construction. Missiles from the wall had slackened off, giving Clooney's horde a chance to desert the ditch for relative safety of the meadows. Clooney appeared well satisfied for the moment. He called Kilcone to his side. This is more like it, ferret. Right, get the tunnel gang. Gather your weasels, stoats, and ferrets. Take them back along the ditch to the southeast corner of the abbey wall. When it is dark, I'll, s I'll send you a signal. Then you can start tunneling through the ditch wall, across the road, under the abbey wall. Is that clear? Kill Cunny through an elaborate salute. Sir, it's clear as the morning dew, Your Honor. Clooney closed his eyes, intently upon keeping his present good mood. There, then get going and try to get it right this time. The battle continued sporadically all day until the evening the ram carriers kept up their attack. But somehow the giant door withstood them. The last v vestiges of twilight were gone. Constance called the captains together. They squatted beneath the parpet in the darkness the, as the badger outlined the situation. Right, all right for the moment, but sooner or later someone will have to be done about the battering ram. Has anyone got a good idea? I'm open to sensible suggestions. Below them, the ram kept on its remorseless battering. Amber Spike had reported some minor splintering in the top edges of the door but the shoring of the earthworks was holding out. Formal had assured them that the extemporary tunnel would take a few days before signs showed that any attempted tunneling would take at least a few days before signs showed. Meanwhile, he and his moles were carefully monitoring the earth in the abbey grounds. Throughout the day-long battle, the animals, animals not directly involved in fighting would have been busy too. Father Abbot involved in fighting Father Abbott was tending the wounded in Great Hall. Friar Hugo was constantly sending cornflour and her helpers back and forth to the ramparts with food and drink. Mrs. Church, Mouse, and Mrs. Vole were making bandages for the old clean sheets. Silent Sam had been left with Tim and Tess, the Church Mouse twins. He had played with the infants until they fell asleep in the heap of bandages. Sam wanted to go out on the wall, but his parents had forbid it. Slipping out to the Great Hall, he passed the time for a bit, listening with an ear to the ground with the company of moles, but Sam soon became bored. He stabbed at the earth with his tiny dagger, imagining raps were popping up from the make-believe tunnel. After a while, he wandered over to the foot of the wall and started sharing some food with Jess. The little squirrel signaled to his parent, asking her what she wanted the big barrel for. Jess Squirrel took her son up on a knee and explained, she had an idea that the barrel filled with something or another could be dropped down upon the ram carriers, but she was not sure what it would be best the barrel fill the barrel with. Sam, Sam jumped down from his no, mother's knee, the barrel was lying aside. He sprang up upon it and walked in about, rolling it very skillfully under his feet. All the time, he was sucking hard on his paw, trying to think how he could help. The tunnel gangs lounged about, leaning on the sides of the ditch. Kilkenny strength stretched full length of the mossy patch. Uh, I'll tell you, this is the life. Better than getting shot at. Me old mother always said, get a good job and keep your heads down. Scumnose came creeping up along the in the darkness. He nudged the ferret. Clooney says you can begin tunneling now. Kilconey marked the cross on the dishes wall with her claw. Right, here you are. We'll start about here, buckos. Come on. 
Now, dig for victory.